Now for a long time, uh, the example of whales was one issue where evolutionists said, well, these creationists, they always say, uh, where are these missing links that show, uh, for example, a transition between land-living ancestors and marine whales? And then suddenly fossils were found in Pakistan and India from the Eocene, and we now have a complete transitional series of organisms that show a transition from a pig-like alleged ancestor of whales to amphibious forms, which are, let's say, seal-like or otter-like to completely marine whales. So this seems like a success story for, for Darwinian evolution. But if we look a little bit closer, we find that the window of time that is established by this transitional fossil series between a pig-like land-living ancestor and a dolphin-like completely marine whale is just about four and a half million years. Now, this, this may seem to be a long time, let's say in our time scale, but one has to keep in mind four and a half million years is the supposed lifespan of a single larger vertebrate species. So you basically have just a single species available to make the transition from a pig-like ancestor to a dolphin-like animal. And this doesn't involve just changes like size differences or transform legs into fins or something like that. Uh, it involves very complicated restructuring of internal organs. And one very striking example has to do with the male testis. The whale has a streamlined body and therefore the testis of the males is uh, 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 shifted inside the body. And it's at a position where there are large muscle packages which are driving the fluke to uh, give the locomotion for whales underwater. And muscles generate heat and we all know uh, too much heat is bad for fertility and bad fertility is basically you don't count in the, uh, in the history of life. So whales had to come up with a mechanism to cool the testes and what they developed is a countercurrent heat exchange system which brings cold blood from the dorsal fin and from the flukes to the testes and transports the hot blood away. And you could make a very generous, very reasonable estimate that for this change to occur, you need at least a single coordinated mutation because without the internalized testes, you don't need the countercurrent heat exchange system and vice versa. And then you can use this waiting time problem and can calculate and can say, well, let's assume the ancestral population of these whale ancestors was like modern large mammals, let's say 100,000 animals. And maybe they had a generation time of modern large mammals, let's say five years. And let's do the math and do the calculation. And what you find out is that you need at least 10 times more time than is available in the fossil record. In the fossil record, we have only four and a half million years available. The mathematics show we would need about uh, 43 million years to uh, get this single uh, uh, change, uh, and probably you need not just a single change, but hundreds or thousands of such changes. So whales are a very good practical example which shows that this waiting time problem uh, basically refutes the feasibility of the Darwinian process.